across the board with Ian the Colonel here on hawkradio.org and across the board radio.com. The Colonel, you play the bass. I'm learning to play the bass and guitar and I look for inspiration, you know, and, right. and who do I like to listen to and who do I think is technically uh, sound and, and you know I can I can learn from as well. One of my favorite bassists of all time, Paul Demore, also happens to be an incredible guitarist. Uh, original bassist for Tool, now kind of the creative genius behind Fearsome Engine, also happens to be on the phone right now with us. Paul, welcome to the show. Hey guys, thanks for the uh, the uh, props. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Yeah, it just uh, huge fans of of everything that you've done. Uh, like we were saying off air, there um, have heard every note of the fearsome engine album the new one and love it it's incredible stuff um but i have to ask you what part i mean i know you're like i said the creative genius behind it but i haven't been able to find any information on exactly what instruments and, and everything you play on the album well i mean pretty much i it's pretty much my record right i have um you know the the credits that are listed are additional musicians so it's mostly me writing and doing all the the majority of the playing, and then I have, you know, some talented friends come in and uh, put their put, do a little magic. Mm-hmm. But generally speaking, it's, you know, it's all my music. What made you decide to go this route with Fearsome Engine? What's the inspiration behind this album? Well, I guess I. It, it, it's not necessarily a cohesive album. It was more of a journey because I, I started. Doing Lusk Part Two, which is the other project I had been working on, and Very nominated, yeah. And uh, you know that band kind of dissipated, but I thought, well, I'll just keep going with it. And I started writing songs by myself, and it just I kind of went to a little darker place. I'm like, this is not Lusk anymore, and so it was kind of it's kind of a journey, you know. So I did a few songs, got involved in scoring some films, did a couple more songs, did a couple more movies. So it was kind of a process. And I think this last three or four songs, I'm really like have honed in on the sound of, of Pearson Engine, I guess. And, and again, we'd love it. Um, it's another album. And I, I, these are just kind of the, the guests that we get on the show. They put out quality albums. That's why we seek them out. Right. Um, we're lucky enough to have them on. But again, first note to last note on this album, incredible. I love every bit of it. And there are no... Some albums these days have long intros or outros, that kind of thing, that kind of get boring and build up to something. But every song, I think, on this album, from the first note, first hit, it, it's, the, it, yeah, it grabs you, and I love that. Uh, I know you play both guitar and bass, and you, you know, do vocals, you do everything. Is there one that you feel more comfortable doing than another? I mean, I, I'm, I grew up as a guitar player. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I guess when I grew up playing, it was like, whatever somebody else wasn't playing in the garage that right. you played. So, you know, you just sort of sit around and figure that stuff out. But I guess I became more, I think, the guitar is the thing I can most, be most expressive with. And I think that's kind of why my playing in Tool was a little bit different than some other guys, maybe, because I sort of just played it like a big, giant guitar and not mm-hmm. and try to do the typical bass player vibe. And, and your your style, the way you play, definitely sets you apart because, you know, you were one of those musicians that when you came around and people started hearing the way you played, you, you influenced a lot of people. And you sure. can hear a lot of people try to duplicate that nowadays uh, from numerous bands, to even different genres I've heard, try to duplicate that kind of that playing technique, that sound, and you can't do it. it, it that definitely, that's to me, that's the, the true mark of someone who is uh, creative and found something on their own. And I, and I really can't tell you how much i appreciate it because it's great awesome thanks i appreciate uh, the kind words and I don't know, i'm just doing my thing so i don't know how <laughs> it, what it is or what I'm just, just it is you just, know just keep doing your thing then brother exactly. it works, i'll tell you <laughs> and and you played on two of the most influential i think in rock albums out there being undertow and opiate uh opiate uh, that's one i listen to all the time i listen to that album over and over again undertow as well um, but Opiate was a lot of live stuff, obviously, you know, you recorded that live. What was that show like? Um, you know, clearly Maynard was sort of upset with the crowd a couple of times and not holding back, laying into them. Uh, what what was the atmosphere like that day? I don't know. That was, I, I think, what I remember about that time is just when band was really sort of like 
kind of blowing up in the L.A. scene, and that was a really great energy. You know, the really that first time playing and just, like, feeling like, wow, there's just something that I'm, I'm we're creating, and I mean, there's that electricity of new new music and, you know, I don't know, strange excitement about it. And this is kind of feel like it was, it was kind of interconnected with all the kids that were digging the music and other bands, and there was kind of just that time. You also had, you know, you've been in numerous projects with Tool, um, you've been with Lusk, but you also had another project with The Replicants. Explain that to me. I like it. I just don't think a lot of people understand and under, and appreciate what it is. It was kind of one of those that flew under the radar, I think. But yeah, it was just more of a lark, really. I mean, it was it was a cool record. It was, you know, I mean, they're just cover songs. But I, agree. I, I think I like it. We had been the band Failure had been opening for Tool for quite a while, and we just like, you know, we always had free time at Soundcheck, so we were always, <laughs> I mean, cover songs, you know, doing our favorite things and. We're like, let's let's make something out of it, you know. And we ended up playing with uh, our friend Chris Pittman, who is now in Guns N' Roses. Mm -hmm. He was at the time the, doing the front of house sound for Tool, and we all, you know, we just hit it off. And Chris was actually involved in in Lusk as well, so and Greg from Failure. Right. Amazing the people that came out of Tool. Is I mean, uh, you know, and, and Billy Howardell well, just, and all of these guys. It, wow. It just kind of shows you to me, it shows me the people, the quality of musicians that Paul hangs around and performs with. And yeah. I think that really is a, says a lot about your character as well. Yeah, I'll give you that. Paul, what do you what do you look for when you're trying to find your tone in recording? I mean, you know, obviously different amps, different guitars. Um, I know you use different guitars and different basses as well. Is there anything crazy you do in, in the recording studio to try to get different tones? No, I mean, sometimes you're surprised what you can get out of the crappiest thing. So <laughs> it's just really, I think, the intention of it mm -hmm. more than the tone or whatever. I don't know. Tone is something you can chase forever and never truly acquire. But you just sort of, whatever you got, just lay it down and do the best you can. And that's kind of what usually happens. I have heard that some of the best guitarists and, and bassists in the world, I have heard say that you'll never play it the same way twice, no matter what. So like right. you said, you can keep chasing it. So that's, yeah. that's deep. I like yeah, that. I mean, I've been like chasing like the amp sound around for years and it's never perfect. And you just sort of, you just got to, it's kind of more, I think of that it's more of a spirit than a sound, you know, you can Ooh, that's good. It's about anything. That's, I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, what? Who are you listening to these days? You know, who do you appreciate? Like I said, I think the the talent pool uh, that's known that's celebrated these days is kind of small. I mean, there there's a lot of kind of crap music coming out these days. So, who do you listen to that you think is is quality? I don't know. I kind of been going a little retro these days, so I've been like rocking some Killing Joke and some old Pill Flowers Excellent. of Romance. Great Public Image. The, those records are really great. I know there's a, something, there's another spirit about that that scene of the 80s, that sort of post-punk thing that I just totally dig. Is this foreshadowing another cover album then? Uh, <laughs> you know, we may do we may do some covers uh, when we start playing this summer. I think um, I've been need to do a few things, so we'll see. So, I love playing. I mean, I you know I love to idolize musicians as well, so you know, that's my way of doing it. Yeah, and I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, when when you perform a song of your own way, that's, uh, you know, the biggest form of flattery. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. definitely, you know, I just, I don't know, I guess I appreciate your your sound, the way that you play so much. What started all that? When you, when you were younger, what made you decide this is the way you wanted to do it? Were you just messing around one day and this is you what know, you know, I don't think that was conscious anything. It was just... You know, I, I think I really kind of cut my teeth musically in sort of in Seattle and just seeing all those. I was fortunate to live there during sort of pre-grunge, you know, when all those bands were still just kind of local bands playing for other bands and, you know, seeing them just doing their thing. And it was really just an incredible, inspiring environment to, to think about music in. And, and, and I think just thinking about music as more of an attitude than a sound or, you know, it's just more of like, 
about who you are, not necessarily about creating sound or, I don't know, that just happens from yourself, not, you know, outside of yourself. But that's why you're creating great, great music, because you are doing that instead of consciously trying to create something commercial or that will intentionally sell albums. You know, it just seems like... Yeah, I mean, in that time in Seattle, none of those bands would even consider that they would make a dollar from playing music. They were just doing it because it was it was there to do. <laughs> if they were feeling it, that's all. And that's, wow, it's such incredible music, absolutely. Fearsome Engine, the new album is out right now, and let me spell this for everybody. So this is F-E-E-R-S-U-M-E-N-N-J-I-N, after the book of almost, well, the same sounding name, almost spelled exactly the same way as well. So Fearsome Engine, and uh, again, every it's just... It's great to talk to artists like you who have that quality from first band to, to you know current band and everything, and there aren't any hiccups in between, uh, and, and we really appreciate that. And, Paul, not to get apocalyptic on you here, but if you heard, somehow found out that the world was about to end in five or ten minutes, what is the last song you would want to hear either performed, listened to by yourself or someone else's that you would want to hear? Well, that's too short of a time to think about it. You can have I'd 15, 20 minutes. Go for it. I'd be I'd be digging a hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a good one. I think I would probably choose silence. 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 That's Perfect. something we've never gotten before. Yeah, no one has ever said that. Yeah. All right, if I, if I backed you into a corner and said you had to pick a song to play then, on guitar or bass, what would be the song? <laughs> that I, if I could play it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, that's... That's a toughie. Um, you know, Led Zeppelin's always one of my faves. So, of course. But I think I, it would probably be something a little less uh, bombastic, something a little mm-hmm. more uh, zen. I don't know, maybe some, uh, some Lee Farcature or something very chill and deserty. Nice, right? <laughs> I, I like that. Go out in a, in a peaceful way. Yeah. yeah. And again, uh, PaulDemore.com, FearsomeEngine.com. Say that three times fast. Uh, but, <laughs> i got to keep you, keep you on your toes. That's right. That's right, yeah. yes. And, uh, but again, I, I love it. And um, you know, what, what else can we look for in the future? You said you know, maybe some more uh, covers and that kind of thing. You know, another Fearsome Engine album. Are you going to collaborate with some other people? You know, lust for yeah, we're working on some video ideas right now, so it could be sort of like a long-form short film kind of vibe that we're kind of screwing around with some ideas with that right now, and Excellent. then and then a, another uh, some really simple videos that we should have wrapped up pretty soon, I think. And then uh, beyond that, I'm just putting the live band together, and we're going to be uh, probably doing some shows over the summertime, and rocking out you say we when you're talking about films and everything is that a collaboration with adam jones being another filmmaker or no N- no it's, i mean um well working with a, a, a screenwriter friend and and uh you know some production companies so okay the people my crew and you've done you know so many like you said a lot of soundtrack work as well like escape from la the roommate a lot of that um is that a different release or catharsis doing you know that type of music as well oh yeah i mean it's like such such a different experience in writing when you're in a band it's a little more i think i don't know it's a little more about you and when you're a composer you're certainly serving the scene and serving the picture Mm -hmm. so it's kind of nice to be to sort of be on that that outside of it you know and being able to do the, some of the things you would never do in your in your band, you know. Yeah, and a, a lot of people are stepping out and doing that now. I think you kind of set the stage for that with rock musicians. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Trent Reznor is doing that now with David Fincher. Yeah, bless a lot his of heart. He's opening the door for because I think that rock that you know people in pop and rock have a definitely a more interesting perspective than a lot of like traditional film composer stuff. Uh, I think it's interesting. That, to see that blow up a little bit more. Do you, when you compose for a film, do you see the film first, or they just tell you what the the plot is and you compose from there? How does that work? Uh, yeah, generally give you roughs, and then you 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 write the picture. I mean, there's always some changes, but I think it's interesting to to see how the image and sound 
interconnect, and it's really a, a powerful experience. Because I would never write this, I would never write something until I could see it, feel it, how it connects. Okay. You know, it doesn't. It never. It would just wouldn't be the same. Makes sense. It would sound like a completely different song or soundtrack at that point. Wouldn't Absolutely. get interpreted the way you want it to. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. With yeah, the emotion yeah. That goes into it. But scoring is like a, a amazing experience. It's really, I love. It. Uh, Paul, any announcements on where we can see you play with Fearsome Engine? You said you're getting the live band together. Uh, yeah, we're we're um, starting rehearsals now, and then you know once once we're kind of feeling like we're good to go, then I'll you know we'll start booking some shows up and. Probably, you know, probably around L.A. and, you know, just to get kick the dust off, you know? Yeah, get get warmed up. Looking forward to that well, for sure. Let Sydney. us know when you come East Coast, because if you come East Coast, we're absolutely there. Yeah, I don't care far, how far we have to drive. We are there for sure. Yeah, fantastic. We'll, we'll be there for sure. That'd be great. PaulDemore.com, FearsomeEngine.com. Get the album. My stamp of approval is on it. Colonel loves it, I know. Uh, we've been listening to it, so uh, <laughs> love every bit of it. We'll be back here in a few minutes on Across the Board uh, with Ian the Colonel on hawkradio.org. And acrossthebordradio.com.